Welcome to the mega edition of the Pass the Game Challenge. In this series, developers make a video game but without any communication. So developer 1 works on the game, then passes it on to the next creator who must continue working on the project where the previous dev left it. This makes for fun twists and huge misunderstandings. Typically each developer gets about 4 hours, but this time around we've given each 10 hours. These past the game challenges often lead to really unique creations such as a spaceship building survival game or a titan smashing boss rush. Will these 5 new developers create something great? or fail miserably and leave us with a broken mess. You'll never guess the huge twists and turns this project is about to go through, nor the insane end result. Let's find out, starting with developer number one, Lost Relic Games. Hey, what's up guys? So I've been invited to be the first developer on this mega game challenge. Now being first is a great privilege, but comes with a lot of responsibility. My work will lay the foundation for the next developers. And if my work is lackluster, they need to reflect on the whole project. So no pressure, right? I decided on 3D as it can be visually impactful with minimal acid work. I spent some time just playing around with a cube, tossing it around, fishing for ideas, until eventually I rolled some floating code, which gave me an idea. I banged out this simple helicopter. It's not gonna win any modeling awards, but it's got a lot of charm and potential. Time to fly. Not so easy. Okay, going to give John a quick break so we can figure out what's wrong with the helicopter. In the meantime, thank you Milanote for supporting the channel. Milanote is an awesome project management tool which we used when organizing this challenge, placing images of the various developers that would take part and using a to-do list to keep track of who has completed their part of the project. The interface is extremely fun, visual and easy to use. You can make plans, create beautiful columns and links, customizable arrows. There's even the possibility of sketching out your thoughts and ideas. When you create a new board, you can choose from a pre-made templates, for example, game world building, which will give you a nice structure you can use to begin writing your thoughts down. The link to Miller Notes is in the description. Now let's get back to John. Helicopter physics. Of course. I think I've got it. Where's it going? This is why I love game dev. I took a new approach, rather treating the helicopter much like a car. I'll then combine that with vertical thrust. After some code wrestling, things are in a good spot. I got to a nice playful arcade feel, complete with directional tilt and air drifting, and two fly modes that switch depending on speed. This allows for more accuracy and maneuverability. It's very important to spend the extra time fine tuning that controller so the next developers don't have to spend any time on it. They can just jump in and say, hey, this feels good and start building a game around it. I then blocked in a simple environment and importantly got the propellers to spin during thrust. But I still needed sound effects. I then mapped the pitch to the thrust. I came to the realization that this sounded horribly annoying, so I decided to source some professional sounds elsewhere. Much better. That's feeling pretty good. I've got to say, I'm pretty happy with the outcome, and I see a lot of potential for game systems to be added on top of this. I even added a bunch of green cylinders to seed some ideas to the next developer. Maybe they can be picked up and carried around or something. By the way, my name is John. I'm a solo game developer working on a brutal combat side scroller called Blood and Mead. A lot of bone crunching combat, but yeah, you can check it out on Steam if you like. I also run a game dev YouTube channel called Lost Relic Games, where I do devlogs and different kind of game dev related content. Hey there, my name is Ken. I'm also known as Golden Evolution Online. I make games in my free time and make devlogs about these games on YouTube. As you can see, the games I make are all in 2D. So when I opened this project, my first reaction was, oh, it's 3D. I guess it's time to add another dimension to my game development skills. First thing I noticed when I played the game is how the camera didn't move with the direction the player is flying in. So before adding any new features, I fixed up the camera. I've personally never really played many flying games myself, but the one game I do remember is Air Combat that I played a long time ago back on the PlayStation 1. I thought about adding aerial combat, but didn't really think it would fit with the movement of the helicopter. 
I noticed the previous person who worked on the project added these barrels that currently don't do anything and thought they could maybe be filled with water. I thought the water could perhaps be used to extinguish fires, so I added a random fire spawner that spawns on top of a random building. I added a mechanic for the helicopter to spray water so they can actually extinguish the fires and a water tank in the helicopter. You can obviously fill up the water tank by picking up these barrels and next to that the barrels of course have to respawn as well. So now they drop into the map with these little parachutes. Next up I wanted to update the look of the game a little bit and considering I cannot make 3D models for the life of me, I just played around a bit with lighting and post processing. I made the game a lot darker to indicate that it's night time, mainly so that the fires pop out a little bit more. I also had a bit of a cyberpunk type of city in mind and secretly hoped the next person picked up on this. With the cyberpunk theme in mind I decided I wanted to add a little bit of chaos into the mix. Right now the fires appear out of nowhere so what better way to start some fires than with rockets. Lastly I wanted to liven up the city a tiny bit so now there's some flying cars too. And my time is up. Hey I'm Ajaxter. To whomever made this helicopter I love you. But I turned it into a superhero. Now, now, let me explain myself. When I first started flying around, I felt like I was the guardian of the city. But after a couple minutes, I realized the game loop was too simple. You spawn in, put out fires, get more water. It was repetitive and lacked variety. So I decided I wanted to make the gameplay more exciting. I started with the first problem. Fires were always on the top of the buildings, which meant I was always hovering above the city looking down. But when I decided to actually fly through the city, it was a whole different level of immersion. An entire region of the map the game wasn't even utilizing. So I changed enemy missiles to hit buildings anywhere rather than just on top. And with that simple change, players had a reason to change elevation throughout the game. But now, maneuvering this helicopter was kind of frustrating and slow. I needed something faster that had tighter controls to fly through buildings with ease. Kind of like a superhero. Hero. So I decided to make a superhero. I started by making a simple humanoid in Blender and gave him a cape using Unity's cloth physics system. Wow. I then started working on the flying. I decided I'd add two different modes of flying. A floating phase where you have your more traditional third person over the shoulder camera and a phase where you're sprinting in the air where you control the movement with your mouse and the camera kind of lags behind the superhero's body when turning. I also added this transition between the floating and sprinting phase to make it seem like he's bursting through the air. Finally, I made him be able to aim the water where he was looking so the player can aim better rather than trying to navigate the helicopter to dump onto the fire. Now that the superhero was pretty much done, I felt like open the doors to a bunch of new things I could do, but I was running out of time, so I quickly added the ability for the player to fly into missiles to intercept them. Now the player had choices to make. Should I go intercept a missile? Should I go get water? Or should I put out a fire? And in the end, I think I did make the game quite a bit more exciting. Also, quick plug for me, I just released a mobile game called Fun Hill. It's on iOS and Android. Okay, see you later. Okay, only two developers left, but let me tell you, things are going to get increasingly crazy. I can hardly wait to show you all the final game. Now, in case you also want to learn how to make video games, we're building the game The Rocket, a massive course that will teach you how to go from zero skills to actually making and selling your first game. So if you want to learn how to code and make game art and animations and every skill required to build your very own worlds, then sign up for the course which is coming out really soon. Link in the description. Hey guys, my name is Sam and I run the Sam Yam channel. I make tutorials on Unity and also fun devlog videos. So this time around when I opened the project, I was just like, what the heck is going on here? So immediately I thought I had to put some order to this chaos. With that, I started out by making it more pretty. So I added a skybox from the Unity asset store so it wouldn't just look like we were in a black hole. I also spaced out the buildings because it felt like the superhero was very constrained. The city was far too tiny and the superhero was going far too fast and there wasn't much room for maneuverability. That was a hard word. Then I made the missiles fly out of the cars because they were actually flying out from the void. And I also made the missiles actual missiles. I also gave the buildings some health. So they were just on fire before, but now they actually decrease in health the longer they are on fire. And if you don't put the fire out, they actually explode. And after three buildings, the game is over, so I added a bit of a game loop too. I also decided to add health to the vehicles so that you can destroy them. And looking through the code, I saw that someone had wanted the superhero man to intercept the missiles to prevent them from hitting. However, it was really hard to tell what missiles were going to hit what building, so I added a line render to the missiles, which would basically display what building they were going to hit. Then I gave the vehicles 
health as well because I wanted superhero man to destroy them and so with the health I also gave the superhero man laser powers similar to some DC character and so the laser power can destroy ships and to indicate the damage that a building and a ship was taking I added a shader outline that turns more red the more damage a ship or building has taken. Hi there, I'm Taro. On the last collab project, I got absolutely mauled in the comments for scrapping too much content and doing my own thing. So this time I aim to be a good boy. Firstly, I replaced the character with a fire truck. But seriously, I wasn't quite sure I received the project in the intended state as it had no floor, which was super disorienting. I did a quick visual once over by adding a floor, some shadows and some lighting. The flying controller was really well made. So whoever did that, good job. Uh, and because of that, I focused heavily on improving the flying experience and throughout my hours, I just continuously work to enhance how it feels to soar through the skies. What we need is a primary objective. Putting out fires is cool, but it feels more like a side task. What would be really cool is a giant mothership to take down. To add a unique twist, what if the only way to kill it was with its own weapons? I began working on hijacking missiles to send back to the ship. I know this looks like hot garbage right now, but let me cook. A really snazzy way to demonstrate speed is to lag the camera behind as the player shoots off into the distance and then slowly catch the camera up. I added some falling logic and reduced the barrel size. I assume this is exactly what the devs want and they just didn't have time to do it. And I added a bit more pizzazz to the laser. And with all that, it was ready for a bit of a scene overhaul. I added some background buildings to take care of the skyline. Dust particles, wind lines, and clouds make it really fun to zip around. I wanted to prevent the player from leaving the combat zone, but I freaking hate invisible walls. I solved this by creating a bounding box around the city and slowed the character down the further from the box it traveled to eventually fully stopping. But I still provided full speed whilst facing the bounds. So I thought this felt pretty good. I played with the idea of controlling the missile from the front like the hero was holding it back. Kind of like that scene from Spider-Man. But uh, this had some obvious problems. The ships are now deployed in waves from the mothership. They fly down to rain havoc on the city. The mothership ominously flies in at the start of the game and has a force field to indicate its impenetrability. Interface meters can be pretty boring, so I show your current water capacity on your cape. I also place the mothership's health bar physically above her. And at this point I had pretty much ran out of time, but Noah allotted me an additional two hours to finalize the game loop and polish it up. And here are the results. So yeah, that's me. Hope you enjoyed my changes. Let me know in the comments if I stuck to the trajectory that the previous devs set this time and I was a good boy, or let me know if I completely ruined the game and took it off course entirely. All right, let's see this thing. What the? <laughs> wow. Yes, dude. Holy. Oh, we got laser eyes. What is this? A superhero game? So my goal is, I guess, to destroy this big spaceship. Well, that's the rocket. Kind of want to see the impact. Oh, shit. I'm happy to see that this, like, a lot of things that I've added are still in there. I'm legit wondering if it's possible. Oh, you can fly into them. Can I fly into a rocket? Moment of truth. Wha- Wait a second. Alright, let's steer it back into the ship. Can I steer it back into the ship? Go home! Go home! No. Okay, 30 second destruction penalty. 
laser beams, water jets. Oh my god, this has really changed. Boom! <laughs> Where is my helicopter? <laughs> well, they've kept some buildings. That's pretty cool. Oh, wow. We got to put this out. How do we put it out? Water jet. Oh, dude, oh, I got a water jet. Oh! <laughs> well, very cool. I am super impressed with this result. You know, I was coming into this reaction thinking, oh, all right, I got to be dramatic. I got to be YouTube. But this is genuine reaction. Like, I'm in awe right now. You can play Mothership on web and Windows. And remember that if you also want to learn how to make games, then sign up to our new upcoming mega course, The Game Dev Rockets. Many more collaborations like this are coming up. So subscribe, like the video, and stay tuned. Cheers.